Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and what I got for you in this video is a two for one deal. I got the Tamron 17 to 28 f2.8, and I got the Tamron 28 to 75 f2.8. Now, these are both DI3 RXD lenses, and they're fairly affordable. They're a very good competition to the Sony products. They're reasonably priced, extremely high quality for the money. They're just great alternative to the Sony lenses. In particular the GM lenses because the sharpness is really really good so let's just see if they hold up to all the hype and in this review I'm gonna demonstrate all that to you but first I just wanted to say thanks to BH photo video for being kind enough to send me these lens to review so if you guys uh, have any photography or video needs be sure to check them out links below in the description area all right so just to kick this off the 17 to 28 f 2.8 lens is a killer wide angle versatile zoom range fast aperture lens now it goes for about 900 dollars. that's not exactly cheap but it is very good for the money because it's full frame coverage and when you see the sharpness distortion control and chromatic aberration and all those things it's very very good very high quality output wise so that 900 dollars price point might seem like a lot for a tamron lens but it's really not and then of course we have the 28 to 75 which is a really nice replacement to the kit lens and this lens goes for about 800 us now i recently reviewed the fe 28 to 60 millimeter collapsible kit lens from sony and i know a lot of people were saying it's not worth it and stuff like that but i was really trying to illustrate the compactness and the lightweight and of course the savings you get when you buy it as a bundle but here look at the difference in size do you see? I mean, it's very, very clear the difference in size. I'll try to line them up perfect here. So, and this lens weighs a lot more. We got 1.2 pounds for this lens, and then we have 5.9 ounces for this lens. Or we're looking at 550 grams for this guy, and we're looking at 167 grams for the little kit lens. So clearly this is better. It's got a faster constant f2.8 aperture and it has a much larger range. But look at the size and weight difference. And that's what I was trying to illustrate when I was going over this lens review and five reasons why I think you should get it. Of course this lens is better, but you don't necessarily want this heavy lens on the front of your camera all the time. You don't necessarily need the super fast f2.8 aperture um, all the time. A lot of times you might be shooting landscapes or whatever the case may be, and the more lighter weight compact lens might be a better option for you in those scenarios. So I just, now that I have this in hand, I just wanted to show you the difference in size because I didn't have this in hand when I recently reviewed the kit lens here. So again, going over these two lenses, I put them through their paces, lots of video samples, lots of photo samples. I did lab testing as well. Oh yeah, don't forget, give me a thumbs up if you think this video is good. All right, so looking at the top of the lenses here, they both have 67 millimeter filter threads and they have the nice pinch style lens cap. So both lenses have the BBAR and fluorine lens coatings. They're both f2.8 max aperture throughout the entire range. They both have a nine blade rounded aperture diaphragm. They both have the RXD stepping AF motor. They both have a minimum focus distance of seven and a half inches or 19 centimeters. They are both also made for the full frame E-mount camera system. Where they do differ is in lens elements. The 17 to 28 has 13 elements in 11 groups, has XLD and LD elements. So the 28 to 75 millimeter actually has 15 elements in 12 groups. It has one XLD element and one LD element. It also has three aspherical elements. Now when it comes to weight, what we're looking at with the 17 to 28 millimeter, we have 14.8 ounces or 420 grams. Then over here on the right, we have the 28 to 75 millimeter. Now this lens weighs in at 1.2 pounds or 550 grams. Now looking at it a little bit closer here, I got the 17 to 28. We have this nice pedal design lens hood. And if we just put the lens hood on, let's line it up with these things here like so. And here is the lens itself. So the lens, the front element on this lens only moves a little bit, as you can see here. If I put it at an angle, see how it's just moving a little bit? 
So it's, it's really not too bad as far as the front of the lens moving. You can still thread filters on there, 67 millimeter filters, and you're not gonna have a problem with the lens element hitting that. The zoom feels pretty smooth, but not buttery smooth. The focus also feels smooth, but it's a little bit, little bit tighter than I would have expected. And you know, it's just a fairly plasticky feeling design. The lens hood's plastic. The lens caps are really nice. I like how those work. They're nice and smooth when you, when you grab them and pinch them. Looking at the back here, we have like a pretty thick um, rear lens cap. It's thicker than the normal Sony style. And then looking at it on the back here, you have a nice metal mount with the rubber gasket here. So it does have the rubber gasket for weather sealing, which is very nice. And now looking at the 28 to 75 in my hand here, you can see this guy. It's got the lens element up front. And there it is with the lens cap on. Now if we zoom this guy, you can see it does grow in size. And this is a little bit harder to zoom. I mean, you could feel there's a little bit of friction there. And, you know, the build quality doesn't feel like the greatest ever. Um, it doesn't feel bad by any mean, but it does not feel the greatest. And looking at it again from the back, we have a large piece of glass back there. And we also have the rubber coating. And uh, the focus on this one feels a little bit smoother than the 17, believe it or not. Yeah, the 17 is definitely tighter than the 28 to 75. So very minimal though. They both feel good. I like the focus ring on both. All right, I just wanted to show you what they look like mounted up to the Sony a7C quick. So here is the 28 to 75 millimeter. And you can see there, it's pretty darn large. It's pretty big, it's pretty heavy. So this total kit, we're looking at about 2.3 pounds with this lens. So it is pretty beefy. It's got a little bit of weight to it, for sure. Let me just show you what it looks like with the 17. And remember, in case you're unaware, this white line here lines up with the white dot on the lens mount there, the E-mount. So you just line that up and then you can turn it on and it locks into place like so. And then the release button, in case you're unaware, is down here for the lens. You just press that button in and it releases a pin that locks the lens in place. That's how you take the lens on and off. So looking at the 17 millimeter to 28 here, it's definitely a little bit lighter, a little easier to hold and it's more compact as well compared to the 28 to 75. But, you know, I gotta say they both feel pretty good in the hand. I would say that 28 to 75 is definitely a bit heavy. I mean, it's noticeable when you're holding it, you're like, wow, this actually has some weight to it. You don't really feel that as much with this lens, although this lens also has weight to it, especially when compared to this little kit lens here that you can use when you want something ultra compact, like if you're going out hiking or something like that, this is a great option just because it barely weighs anything compared to these higher quality faster aperture lenses. But anyways, that's what these lenses look like in hand. So let me show you what these guys can do in the real world. Like I said, I have a ton of sample video and a ton of sample photos, including lab testing, real world, and so forth. Let's just move on to the next segment. All right, here's just a quick test. I have the Tamron 28 to 75 on the a7C in front of me, and this is recording at f2.8. I just wanted to show you at 28 millimeter how the lens performs. Now, let me just hold this up. Let's see, it does a really good job. Very smooth, silent, can't hear nothing other than stuff outside. All right, let me zoom in here. That's now 75 millimeters, so I'm just going to zoom back a little bit. And you can see, it still is doing a really good job. See, it's nice and smooth, nice and sharp. It's definitely tracking my face really well. Not, no complaints there. And um, that's pretty much what we're looking at. All right, so here we are in Lightroom, Adobe Lightroom. And the first thing I wanna show you is just the range from 17 to 75. So I'm kind of treating this like one lens, even though it's two separate lenses. But anyways, check this out. I'm gonna go through here and I'm just gonna show you what it looks like 
at each range from the same exact distance. I did not move the camera. So this is what it looks like at 17 millimeter, about, I don't know, I'd say about four feet from my lab scene. So that's 17 millimeter, that's 28 millimeter with the 17 to 28 millimeter lens. Now look at 28 millimeter on the other lens. So this is 28 millimeter on the 28 to 75 lens. And this is 28 millimeter on the 17 to 28. So you can see, even though they're the same number value, the result is quite a bit different. The distortion is different and uh, it's a little bit, you know, more cropped in a little bit tighter. So it's more like 29 millimeter, let's say. Anyway, here is 35 millimeter. Here is 50 millimeter. And here is 75 millimeter. So you can see that's quite a bit of range. So that's 75, here's 28. So that's 28 to 75. That's the range you can expect from that lens. And then all the way to 17 millimeter, there's 17 to 28. All right, so let me just show you 17 to 75 quick. And again, this is from the same exact position. I did not move the camera. So that's what you can expect as far as range goes. Now, let me just show you what the distortion looks like and then we will go over sharpness. So if I go over here and I click the enable profile correction, you can see the distortion and the vignette gets pretty much fixed. And it's quite a bit of distortion. It's not crazy bad, but it is definitely noticeable. And that was at 17 millimeter. So here it is at 28 millimeter. Now again, this is the 17 to 28 millimeter lens. So you can see at 28 millimeter it has less distortion, but there's just a little bit there. Now let's move on to the 28 to 75 millimeter, and you can see here is quite a bit of distortion, and it fixed it pretty good. It's actually not as much distortion as I thought. Here at 35 millimeter, very little correction there. Sorry about my laptop fan, it's cranking up because this is uh, taxing the laptop quite a bit because I'm screen recording also. Now here is 50 millimeter, quite a bit of distortion there. It's not that bad, but it's definitely noticeable. And here we are at 75 millimeter. And you can see here, just a little bit of distortion. But again, this is a one-click fix with Adobe Lightroom, so it's really not a big deal in my opinion. Let's go over the 17 to 28 millimeter lab test photos quick, and I will show you just how sharp this lens is wide open at f2.8, 17 millimeter, and so forth. And then I'll show you the minimum focus distance as well. Now, if this is boring to you guys and you're not really interested in the lab pictures, just skip ahead in the video um, to the real world photos or sample video or something like that. Or you could always go to the conclusion if you just want to hear the final conclusion. But this is, uh, you know, some people really do enjoy seeing this technical detail. So anyways, this is 17 millimeter f2.8. No lens correction enabled here. See how I do not have it corrected? And now if I zoom in, let me just get rid of this. I'm not gonna to touch that anymore. You can see at f2.8, it's pretty darn sharp. I mean, it's, it's absolutely incredibly sharp, to be honest. It's an excellent lens as far as sharpness goes. And distortion is pretty well controlled as well as the colors. So overall, I'm super impressed with this lens. I really am. And you can see the bouquet balls look really good. They're nice and round. And if we go to F4, you'll see the bokeh balls will just get a little smaller and the lens actually sharpens up just a little bit more. It gets even more sharp. You can see in the corner here, it's looking pretty good. Now, if I go to 200%, I just wanted to show you at F2.8 here. Let me go back to F2.8. You can see there is no fringing at all on this metal. There's no purple. You see that? No purple, nothing. No blue on that high contrast. Same thing with the coins down here. There is nothing. So that's extremely impressive, in my opinion. And I just wanted to make sure you were aware of that. So if I go to the right here, I'm just stopping down. You can see the vignette goes away a little bit as I stop down. Now this is F8, F11, and F16. So let me just, let me just zoom in here on F11 so you can see what that looks like. See the background detail is starting to come back in there. See, it's very sharp, corner to corner, looking really good there. Here's F16, and it gets a little bit softer here from the diffraction, but not too bad. And now looking at 28 millimeter with the 17 to 28, this is wide open at F2.8. Let me zoom in there so you can see just how sharp this lens is. 
And again, notice the lack of any kind of chromatic aberration here. I'm looking at the coins, there's really nothing there. If you go on to here, you can see just a little bit right here on these circles. There is a little bit, but very, very minor. And another little bit right there. If I go down to F4, that'll probably go away. So here's F4, and you can see it's mostly gone away, but it still is a little bit there. And just look at that sharpness. Incredible, right? So you could see the sharpness is off the charts at F2.8 and F4, so it's just going to get sharper as I scroll to F8. F11 and F16 is where it'll get a little bit softer due to diffraction. You can really see that at the F16. F11 is looking really good, though, as you can see here. And F8, also incredibly sharp. So the last thing I wanted to show you with the 17 to 28 millimeter lens is the minimum focus distance. And the minimum focus distance is only seven and a half inches. So you can get these lenses really close to the subject, which is can actually cause problems with shadows and stuff. You can see the shadow over here because the light was slightly behind me to the right. So I had the lens and camera so close, it was causing shadows. But just look at this, f2.8 minimum focus distance, and that is incredible quality sharpness there. Absolutely incredible, if you ask me. The bokeh balls look pretty good. And here's just another one, f4. And again, this is at 100%. You can see just how sharp. Now the bokeh balls do have a little bit of like noise inside them, so they're not like the best bokeh balls. But they look pretty darn good. They're nice and round, that nine blade aperture diaphragm. Now just look at how sharp this quarter is. This lens is unbelievably sharp. This is at f8. Super, super impressive. Now here's 28 millimeter, pretty much the same distance. And f2.8. Now you can see there is a little bit of fringing at 28 millimeter. Still very, very minimal, but there is more than there was at 17. Now if we stop down at f4, most, almost pretty much all of it goes away. And you can see it's looking pretty good at f4. There's f5.6, and there's f8, and you can see it's looking pretty darn good. So again, 17 to 28 millimeter lens performs phenomenally in the lab testing photos. Other than a little bit of distortion, it's definitely noticeable, easily correctable. Sharpness is off the charts. Color and clarity looks great. Bokeh ball renderings, they're pretty good. I've seen better with prime lenses, of course, but with a lot of lens elements like this tends to be a little bit not as clean in the bokeh rendering. So let's take a look at the 28 to 75 millimeter so we can have a little comparison here. So 28 millimeter, if we zoom in to 100%, you could see razor blade pretty much sharpness once again. Looks excellent. Corner to corner, the sharpness is really, really good. And it's just gonna get sharper as we stop down. So here is F4, and again, of course, incredibly sharp. And you can see the background. Here's f5.6. It's looking pretty darn good. And I pretty much did the same thing for the key focal length. So here's, let me go to 35 millimeter. Here's 35 millimeter. Let me just zoom in so you can see that wide open at f2.8. Looking really good. See the detail on the pipe cleaners and stuff. Again, the bokeh balls are looking pretty good. There is a little bit of noise inside the bokeh balls, though. They're not like the cleanest looking. So let's go to 50 millimeter. So here's 50 millimeter zoomed in, 100%. You can see incredible sharpness and clarity and no fringing at all that I can see. Looks excellent. A little bit of softness here in the corner, just tiny, tiny bit. So here's another one, looking at it, F4. I'll zoom in a little more here. And just take another look at these bokeh balls. You can see they're looking pretty good. Here they are at f5.6. And here they are at f8. So let's zoom in to 75 millimeter. So this is the maximum zoom for the 28 to 75 millimeter. And at f2.8, you can see the bokeh balls look really good. They, they do have just a tiny bit of noise inside the balls, but overall, they still look very good in my opinion. Um, they have like a little bit of a highlight ring on them, which you may or may not like. But again, I think they look very good. And you can see here the dollar bills are extremely sharp. It looks like the corner sharpness is falling off just a little bit. But again, depth of field is extremely narrow at this distance as well. So it looks like this one I have the lens profile correction enabled for some reason. I don't know why. Turn that off. Okay, so this is F4 and you can see here very, very good sharpness. Go down to 5.6, still looking very good. 
and here we're looking at f8 and again sharpness is incredible the bouquet is starting to octagon just a little bit so let me show you the minimum focus distance with the 28 to 75 millimeter lens here so now at 75 millimeter this is what you can expect wide open at f 2.8 and you can see it looks really really good I don't see any fringing here at all on the quarter which is remarkable considering how close I am and how narrow the depth of field is now it's just going to sharpen up as I stop down so you can see f4 looking incredible f5.6 is going to be even sharper as you can see here and then if I just continue down you can see the bokeh balls are going to get smaller and there's f16 and you can see the sharpness is still really good on the quarter and now looking at it 28 millimeter here same exact test just at 28 as opposed to 75 so here's f2.8 and you can see again the lens and quarter look very good depth of field is a factor here because I'm so close to the quarter and here's f4 f5.6 f8 as you can see here and f11 and f16 all right let me just show you some quick sample video doing some focus transition testing in the lab So here we are looking at the real world photos and I just combined both lenses into one folder and I have them two starred here. So you're going to see the two star rated real world photos from both lenses that I took over the past few weeks. So check this out. I wanted to show you this cool off-road truck that I got. I got a different model. You might have saw my review of the other one that I had. This one's far superior. This one's made by Axial. It's the SCX24 Jeep Wrangler. You will see some video footage of this in a moment. But I just wanted to show you some of the photos I took first of this Jeep. Now, here is with the headlights on, and this did produce a decent amount of flaring, as you can see here. So I was just showing off the Jeep, but also some flaring that the 17 to 28 millimeter lens suffers from in this particular scenario. So you can see up here on the top left is, will be where the EXIF data is. So if you're curious what lens I was using, what other settings such as aperture, ISO, shutter speed, and focal length, please refer to the top left as I am scrolling through these images. I did do some adjustments on some of these, like this one here, I brought a little bit of the shadow detail out. But what's cool about this shot I wanted to really illustrate is the wide angle effect you get with a lens like this. So I was very close to the subject, which makes the front top look bigger and the back of the Jeep smaller and it gives you that really nice 3d almost distorted view but also notice at f2.8 that awesome depth of field separation you're getting which is really really awesome now this was actually taken with the 28 to 75 so now I'm at 75 millimeter so check this out this is 17 millimeter this is 75 millimeter so you can see it looks quite a bit different the the Jeep looks much less distorted you can see the Jeep actually looks accurate now. It doesn't look stretched or anything like that at 75 millimeter. Here's another angle here. Just look at that suspension articulation. This Jeep is incredible. It's definitely far superior from the other rock crawler you might have seen in my other videos. Now here I was just playing around. So look, I focused on the back wheel and left the front wheel out of focus. I'm at f4.5. Now watch this. Now I focus on the front wheel. And you see the difference? Just look at that depth of field play. It's pretty amazing. And you can expect that with a killer lens like this. There's just an angle again from the back illustrating the incredible suspension articulation. Now here's a few shots outside. It was just posing the car. This is again with the 28 to 75 millimeter. So I'm at 75 millimeter, which is yielding a very realistic looking truck. The depth of field is very narrow, but there's no distortion or anything like that. That's what the truck looks like. Looks really cool. 
Tires are pretty large. Just doing some depth of field play here with the foreground and the background. Now here is one more with the 75 millimeter. Now here's the 17. See the difference? <laughs> Look at that. I mean, 75 millimeter, you're just on that Jeep. Can't see much of the background. 17 millimeter, now you can see the whole sky, the house, the bikes, all sorts of stuff. And the, the Jeep itself looks a little more distorted. So I actually really enjoy the way the wide angle distortion affects photos. Just look at this one. This in particular is a great wide angle. You know, I'm like exploiting the wide angle lens to create an effect. And this is a good example of that. So here's just another angle. Now look at this one. This is at f7.1. So you can see the background is still blurry, but not that blurry. Now look at this one. Pretty much the same shot at f2.8. So here's f2.8. And here's 7.1. Just so you can see that depth of field play. Now here's an angle from the back of the Jeep, climbing a rock there. And you can see just how much more sky and scene you can get into with the 17 millimeter. Now here I went down to the Livingston Manor covered bridge and I took a bunch of bracketed photos to create these HDR images. And I have a dedicated video on this that'll walk you through the process from start to finish. So I'm just gonna scroll through these images, but just so you know, they are HDR photos, which stands for high dynamic range photography which basically means it's multiple exposures blended together to yield results like this. So in this case, I was using three separate exposures, negative two EV, zero, and plus two EV. And you can see here just how awesome the results are. The sharpness and clarity of this lens is remarkable. And I really enjoy this nice wide angle symmetry shot that I got with the 17 millimeter. And you can see just the clarity and detail is remarkable. Here's another one. Looking up the uh, downstream here, covered bridge. Here's another one with a little bit of foreground detail. I don't know what this was, but it was a piece of uh, old iron steel. Looked like part of a train track or something. Here's one just looking up the river. And again, just look at that clarity and sharpness. Absolutely astounding. You see it up here? In the, I mean, really incredible stuff. And I had to go over to West Point the other day for work, and I had to go to the visitor's area to get a uh, contractor pass. And the tank was parked out there, so I took an HDR of the tank, just to, you know, pretty cool looking. Now here's just a couple at West Point here. I, I saved this image here, it's nothing special, only because I wanted to show you the lack of chromatic aberrations. You see, on this high contrast scene, there's nothing. I mean, there's no chromatic aberration really to speak of that I see here. I mean, you would normally see it on like a spot like this or something, and there's nothing. But granted, I am at f5.6. I'm not wide open at f2.8, but still, remarkable lens control. Now here, looking down the Hudson River, this is another HDR. There was a train coming, which was kind of cool, along the river edge there. And, and then this ship was here. You could see that there. Came out okay. It was a moving subject, so it's not the sharpest, the ship itself. Here's one single frame. You can see this came out a little bit better. This is at 200%, let me go to 100%. There we go, that's what it's supposed to look like. So you can see pretty good detail overlooking the Hudson River here, it's a pretty famous area. And then they have the great chain plaque here. If you wanna read this, just pause the video. But basically they put a huge chain across the river to stop boats from going up. And you can imagine how thick and heavy that chain was. Absolutely ridiculous. And here's just another view looking out. It's very, very pretty. And they have a bunch of uh, cannons set up on site there so you can check them out. Pretty cool seeing the history there. And these cannons are really nice. Very, They're actually very decorative, have a lot of detail, more than you would expect, more than I expected. And here's just some of that huge chain that they used to go across the river. A chunk of it they have set up there so you can check it out for yourself. It's gigantic, it's like a foot and a half long. Here's a cannon set up on one of these uh, I don't even know, cannon chassis, I guess. They can wheel it around. And here's just a closer look of the actual barrel. I mean, look at that. Isn't that amazing? Incredible detail. Now check this out. This one actually got hit by a cannonball. Look at that. Can you imagine being behind this cannon and seeing a cannonball come flying at you and it actually hits the front of your cannon? <laughs> I can't even imagine. But I thought that was pretty cool. Check that out. There's just another angle, so you can see the dent. It looks like an apple bite taken out of the cannon. But check out the river in the background and stuff. Just a really beautiful scene over here. And they, they actually have the, um, you know, binoculars set up so you can check out some stuff. Now here I was just hanging out with my brother and uh, they had a funny sign. I thought this was really funny. 
chippy for 2020 because humans suck. <laughs> so anyways, here we go. So we went down to Eddie's. You, you are definitely gotta be, if you've watched my reviews, you're familiar with this restaurant. It's one of my favorites. So I went down there at my brother the other day after work to, uh, you know, get a frosty beverage. And you could see here with the 28 to 75 millimeter, I got this really nice background separation, beautiful picture of the pint. Very happy with the results there. And here's another one. I was at 75 millimeter for this one again. And just another one playing around with depth of field and stuff. Hey, yo. So here's just one where they were putting the receipts on and this was at 75 millimeter. And I really liked how the pictures rendered in the background. You see them on the wall here? Look at that buttery bouquet rendering. Very, very cool in my opinion. And uh, I just thought that was an interesting shot. So now here's some of the food we got. We got some killer nachos. These were fully loaded nachos with like short rib on them or something. They were incredible. And here's just this delicious shrimp. It was shrimp with uh, garlic bread here. And that was also absolutely incredibly delicious. Here's another angle of some of these nachos. And they were really, really tasty. They make their own chips there as well. Of course they do. Why wouldn't they? Here's just another one. And the uh, the sunlight was illuminating the glass so much that it made it so bright that the background went black. When I took this image, you could see the shutter speed is at 1 hundredth of a second. Now, in case you were wondering, the uh, these lenses are good for sports as well. I took some pictures of the kids riding their bikes and was able to trap, was able to track the subjects, no problem. And you can see here, Jay's coming towards me and Layla. And here's just more of a portrait of Layla I took just to show you 75 millimeter f2.8, what kind of separation you can get. And you can see here, it looks really good. Another one, see very sharp, very, very good. Now here's a couple more of the kids coming towards me. And I, I thought this was kind of cool because the moon was up here in the sky. It just made a pretty cool frame. And Jace's face was like lit up. And uh, I thought that was pretty cool. But you could see all these shots are sharp. They were just consecutive shots of the kids coming towards me. I'm walking backwards and they're riding. And I was pretty impressed. Here's just a portrait of Jace. And you could see he just got glasses. Um, his eyes were bothering him a little bit, being on the computer screen for, you know, the virtual learning for school and stuff. And um, so we brought him to the eye doctor and uh, he definitely needed some glasses. So he's sporting some new glasses like, like daddy. Here's uh, Allie, um, Layla and Jace's cousin. They're having a good time riding around. She's actually wearing my helmet. A little backlit action there. I just wanted to show you what it looked like with the sun backlighting the subject. You could see the hair lighting up very, very well controlled. It lost a little bit of contrast here, but I could bring that back if I wanted to in Lightroom very easily. Here's another one of Layla and she was actually rolling towards me. So I was just taking a couple more consecutive shots. So you can see how the lens performs when tracking. All right. That is pretty much it for the real world. Let's check out some more video footage, shall we? Thank you. 
Just a quick like vlogging test with the Tamra at 17 millimeter. I'm just using the on camera audio. So, uh, but you can see the wide angle. I'm just holding it with the RSC2 gimbal and at 17 millimeter, that's what's kind of, that's what kind of point of view you can have with my arm. I'm about six foot one and uh, it's pretty good. Dial that a little better. Pretty cool. Aim it down like this, look down. Get a little sun flare in there. Control. All right, guys, so I really hope I illustrated for you how well the Tamron 17 to 28 and 28 to 75 millimeter lenses perform in the real world and in the lab and you know what you could use them for in your photography and video needs. I took a lot of sample photo, sample video and minimum focus distance, test, distance testing, all sorts of stuff like that. And I can say conclusively after all the testing, both of these lenses are really, really good. They are exceptionally sharp, even wide open at f2.8. They handle chromatic aberration very well. The out of focus bokeh renderings are very pleasing to the eye. The lenses are fairly lightweight. Build quality is pretty good. Not as good as some of the Sony lenses. They are made more of plastic. The lenses are very, very nice overall. I would definitely recommend them. For the money, it's really hard to beat that fast aperture and killer sharpness across the board. So if you're in the market for a wide angle lens, the 17 to 28 millimeter is a excellent option. And the 28 to 75 is more of like a all-in-one type lens, a replacement for the kit lens, I would say. A very good replacement for the kit lens, I might add. But uh, it is a lot heavier and a lot larger. So depending on your needs, it may or may not be worth it for you. But again, 28 to 75 f2.8 throughout is an excellent range. And you can get killer separation from the background with that 75 at f2.8. And uh, I was really impressed with the results I got, especially with recording video on the gimbal and stuff. A lot of fun playing with the uh, lenses and stuff. So, all right, guys, that is about it for this review. Again, thanks BH Photo for letting me borrow the lenses. Be sure to check them out for your gear needs. Links below the video. And also, be sure to do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up if you thought this video was useful. And of course, 
hit that notification bell if you want to be notified of future videos. All right, be sure to let me know what you think in the comments section below. If you have this lens, let me know what, what your thoughts on, on it are. You might have one or the other, you might have both, but you know, this is a uh, quite a few Tamron lenses I've reviewed lately for the full frame Sony E-mount system and they've all been really good. So nice job Tamron, keep it up and uh, I will catch up with you guys next time. All right, be safe out there and uh, you guys have a great day. Take care.